Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. In this episode we are looking at WLED and the Wemos D1s aka a ESP8266. We're going to be looking at flashing in the first configuration. Now I'm going to assume that you've already got your LEDs and you've got some sort of suitable power supply and you've looked at this page on how to connect up the LEDs. We're just going to go straight into the actual flashing and then the first configuration of WLED. So as you can see by the project page on GitHub, it's very well documented. So what we need to do is we need to download the correct bin file that we're going to use to flash. And we'll look on there and we've got plenty of beta versions, but we're not going to use a beta version. We're going to use a stable uh, release, which is at the time of recording, it's 0.12. And I've been running that since its release and it's been very stable. So that's the version we're going to be using there. Tempted to try a beta, but for the for this video, we're going to do the stable version. So we've got latest release. Now it's saying which which version should I use? Now for us on a Wemos D1, we're going to be using the WLED ESP8266.bin. We're not going to specify a memory chip size. We're just going to use the basic. And to flash this software, we're going to be using Node MCU PY Flasher, which I've used before. So we're going to download the latest version of this. So first off, let's point the software to the binary that we've just downloaded. So we'll click on the browse button and find where we've just downloaded. And there's the binary file. So we'll load that in. Now we need to connect the Wemos D1 to the computer via a USB cable. So we'll do that. Then if we click on reload, we'll see that the communications port is listed. So we'll leave all the settings default, but we'll click wipe all data. So it wipes the flash chip. And once it's wiped the flash chip, it'll then program the ESP. Now you could increase the board speed if you've got a decent cable. But I always like to keep it slow and steady just so the data is um, intact. But you could push it up a bit higher. And you can see that the LED flashes on the ESP8266 unit as it's programming. So once this is completed, we should get a message at the bottom of the screen that the flash was successful and it's switching back to normal bootloader mode or normal boot mode. So we look for WLED AP, which is the access point, which is default enabled. And then we enter the password of WLED 1234. That is the default password for this. And then it should connect to it. Now, if your device is clever, like a phone or something, it should automatically come to the screen without doing anything but if you don't you need to navigate to 4.3.2.1 but here we can jump straight into Wi-Fi setup so we're going to be using DHCP on this one but if you wanted to use a static IP address you would also enter it here so we'll just um, make sure there's no spaces at the end because it does matter and we'll put in my Wi-Fi password. Now, if you wanted to add an IP address, you could add it into there. And obviously your gateway and check your subnet's correct. Once it's correct, click save. Now we're using the WLED software here that's downloadable from the store. And we've asked it to search for the, light, uh, the board. So we've entered the IP address into a browser and you can see we've got the WLED page. 
So we'll put it into PC mode, which gives us like bigger options, more options for a bigger screen. So if we just go to config, we can see there all our Wi-Fi settings. Again, if you wanted to use a static IP address, you would add it here. So there are a couple of things we do need to change on here. But most importantly, you've got LED type, the, the order color and the pin, and the amount of LEDs that you will be using in the string. Now for me, I have a relay connected to it, and my relay is connected to pin 12 of the ESP uh, Wemos D1 module, so I have to select relay pin 12 here. And once you're happy with the settings, press save, and it will take you back, and then click back and go back to the main screen. Now we'll be placing the Wemos unit into position one on my board, which will be here. And I've already got an LED matrix connected to it. So we'll add some power to it. And sure enough, the developer says if everything works correctly, the first 30 LED should light up a nice color orange, which it does. But that's only 30 LEDs. And this matrix is capable of 64 LEDs. So this is what we need to change. Now I wouldn't recommend leaving this matrix on full power because it will get rather warm. So let's have a look first what happens if we change, if we get the wrong order colour in the LEDs. So you can see that the green and the red are back to front. If that happens, you just need to change the order colour. It will happen on some strips and other strips it won't. But if the, if those th if those two basic colours are mixed up, there's an option there to change it around. So that all works nicely. Now we're going to LED preferences. And we'll change it to 64 LEDs. And we'll save and exit. And you see all 64 LEDs are now lit up. And displaying the correct colour. Now at which point you can start messing about with the, the preset patterns that are on there. Believe me, there is plenty of them. So this is your first step into getting WLED and some nice effects. Now also as well, obviously you can change brightness. I won't, I won't um, put it on too bright because it will get rather warm. But a panel like this draws over an amp when they're all lit up. So see plenty of plenty of patterns. There's also things you can do to change these individual patterns as well, like the effect intensity and the effect speed. But we can also select which colours it uses. I always like using random cycle, but there are preset colors, preset color patterns that you can use to integrate into the, the sequences themselves. So there's absolutely plenty of scope to be playing with this. There is a great help section on the WLED um, wiki page and the WLED GitHub page that links you off to their documentation. It's very thorough. And on there gives you um, instructions on how to connect up your LEDs. But I've been using these boards now for a few years when controlling Christmas trees and lights. So there's a button at the top peak, if 
you click on that it tries to show you what the pattern would be if you didn't have any LEDs connected to it it does kind of match it I suppose but it's a good it's a good indicator of what it should be doing So in the next episode we're going to be looking at synchronizing two of these units together and then synchronizing three of these units together using its internal synchronization function and then in a future episode we'll be touching on MQTT and Node-RED. Anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.